In this lecture, we're going to talk about understanding context and environment variables with expressions in GitHub Actions. Contexts are the way to access information about workflow runs, runner environments, and jobs and steps. Each context is an object that contains properties which can be a string or an other object type. It can be an array type as well. And the environment variables, as it names, as like any other CI CD tool, GitHub Action also has an environment variable, which are both inbuilt as well as GitHub Action specific, and it can be accessed across the workflow. So if we set the environment variable, then this can be used as a part of any of the run or steps within that particular workflow. And contexts are going to look something like this. And you can see that all these contexts are something that we can use within the expressions. And you can see that there is a context called GitHub, which actually is a GitHub context. So we can get the information about the GitHub actions, executions and stuff under the sun, during the time of the steps. Similarly, we can get the environment variables and that is something called as ENV context. And similarly, we have a job context, which can be used to access a particular job name and this job step and the job action that is currently being executed failure or past information. So that's called as job context. Similarly, you can see there is a step context, runner context, secret, strategy, matrix, needs, and input contexts. These are the different kinds of contexts which are available within GitHub Actions. So you can go to these links and understand how these things are working. I mean, these are pretty straightforward as it names, and we can use them in the workflow of the GitHub Action as much as we can. As I told you, expressions are going to be used in combo with these context as well as the environment. And expressions are used to programmatically set variables in the workflow files and access the context. And the expression is going to look something like this. We have already discussed about these expressions in our earlier lectures where we talked about the functions like always to say even if the step or the previous steps are failing, it is always going to execute it. And similarly, there was a failure function which was used to run only if there is a failure in the above step. That's how we called the functions before. We also used this expression to call a context like runner context, like runner.os to get the OS information. That was a runner context. So we used this expression even earlier, but now we are going to see a bit more detail in the context of the contexts as well as the environments. So let's see all of these in action and understand how things work. So let's go to our code and let's go to our workflow and in the basics.yaml file over here, we are going to start creating a context. As you can see over here, we have already used the context with the functions. So we're not going to really discuss about the functions here. You can go to the GitHub action page and understand what the different functions available. But right now I'm just going to leave this as it is. And I'm going to start creating a simple environment and then we can start using that environment over here. So in order to create the environment, we just need to give this env to specify we are going to be calling an environment variable. And this environment, just for the simplicity purpose, I'm actually going to call this as the selenium driver. So this is the driver which is going to be used while we are going to be executing our test. So I'm going to call this as the remote web driver. And this is the environment variable. So this environment variable we can access in any of the steps because this is defined within that particular job. So we can access this environment variable within this particular job in any of the step. So let's try accessing this particular environment variable in one of the step over here. I'm just going to name this as run selenium test. And I'm going to call this as if and you can see that I'm going to be using the if with an expression saying env dot and I can call the selenium underscore driver is equal to so I'm going to see that we can use the conditions over here and I'm going to say remote web driver something like this and also I forgot to mention you should be in a single quote instead of the double quotes because it's going to throw you an error while you execute and that's it. Once we have this, we can then try to run any one of the command below this particular if condition. So I'm going to say echo running test in Selenium grid setup. That's it. So this is the way that I can access the environment variable in the 
the github action so if i execute this and if i go to the actions and i guess this step is not going to execute because we have not mentioned the always there because the above step is going to be failing so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to make this step to be passing because this is going to be always a problem for us so i'm just going to make this as mkdir new folder which was the case before i'm going to commit the changes and i'm going to go to the action let's go to the selenium test job and you can see that we are actually seeing an environment of the selenium uh, driver over here and you can also see that while we run the selenium test it is actually giving us this if condition to be passing if there is something else on the if condition then that's not going to be executing for us for sure because the condition is checking for the environment variable as selenium as remote web driver so if i just gonna say the remote web drivers here let me edit that and if i just put web drivers and if i do a commit and you can actually see that the run selenium test has not been executed the reason being it has not satisfied the if condition with the remote web drivers in the environment variable so that's why this particular step has not been executed so this is how we can see that we can use the environment variable in the expressions of github actions the next thing which we're going to talk about is going to be the contexts and once again to talk about the contexts we can actually go all the way back to the github page and if i go to the context documentation over here you can see that they have mentioned a lot of different contexts which are available like github context environment context that we just saw similarly job context step context runner context and stuff so let's say if i am going to go to this github context you can see that the github context contains the information about the workflow that runs and the events that are triggered in that run and you can also read most of the github context data and in the environment variables for information about the environment variables use this environment variables and you can see that these are the things that you can actually obtain as the property name and you can also see that which job is being executed in the github.job so it will give you the job id of the current job similarly github reference name and the github path and the repository owner or something like that so let's see if i want to get this particular repository owner so i'm just going to copy this and i'm going to go all the way over here and let's say i'm going to be printing repository owner for that matter i'm going to go over here and i'm going to say one more run echo the code is being triggered by and because we're going to be using any of the context we should use the expressions and i'm going to just do a commit changes and i'm going to go to the actions and if i go to the update basic dot yaml file you will see that it says that the code is being triggered by execute automation so this is the user which is triggering this particular code and that's why it is actually executing but there is a problem over here i think i have missed a double quotes there but that's all right that's not the matter over here the, the whole idea is how you can obtain a particular information using the context so that's how we could able to do all these things over here that is great so that's about the context environment variables and how we can use the expression so these are something which we can use even further while we talk about how we can manage the different triggers and how we can run a specific operation based on a specific trigger we shall be talking in our next lecture of this course but as of now this is the basics of context environment variables and using it with expressions